Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Litter Media Live special edition today brought to you by Classic Brands. We're talking with a former businessman, educator, John Goodwill, not about his days as a businessman or an educator, but about an experience that he had many years ago with the white monsters of Sherman, New York. Intriguing, right? Stick with us. We'll talk more about that coming up right after this from Classic Brands. worth it if you enjoy it. Nicolope Ultra. Back with John Goodwill. Some folks might remember John back from his days at uh, Carl's Townhouse. Yes, you were yes. telling me your dad actually started. Uh, actually, he's my father-in-law. Your father-in-law, father-in-law I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, back in 1951. 1951, and, yes. And uh, then you ran the business for about 18 years? For about years. 18 years, yes. And then you got into education after that? Yeah, well, I'd already had my degree, mm-hmm. uh, and... My father-in-law decided to retire, so we took over the restaurant, but I always wanted to teach. Yeah. And my mom, before she passed away, actually said that. She said, John, you've always huh. wanted to teach. What are you doing in this restaurant? And I said, yeah, she's bright. Of course, she passed away yeah. and never seen me, but I finally, um, job came up, and I ended up going to Adena, and I loved every minute. I was there for 23 years. But you also served in the military. Yes. I was in the Air Force for four years. Yeah. Very good. Well, here, uh, Aaron Glennon, our producer, has the image of the cover of the book, The White Monsters of Sherman, New York. It was illustrated by Jonathan Dodd. Uh, I guess the, a group called the Moth Boys put this together. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Talk uh-huh. about that. Uh, they contacted me about a year and a half ago. Uh, they had got my name somehow through social media. I had written a letter years and years before that when I was actually 15 years old uh, and they seen a copy of the letter and they said they spent years trying to find me so they finally got a hold of me through my oldest son and we communicated then they wanted to do a podcast so we got together and they were from that area I'm from a little place called Sherman New York Mm -hmm. and it was in Chautauqua County and they all grew up in that area so they were really interested because it was in their backyard. Yeah. Now, this story is a true story about an, an experience that you had not once, but multiple times, not only you, but your family and yes. some other folks that saw these almost sloth-like looking yes. creatures. Talk yes. about that. Yeah, well, the, the first time you want to, the one, yes. my first experience, uh, my brother and I was a year younger than me. And by the way, he wouldn't do the podcast he said, there's no way. But anyway, we were walking. Uh, we lived about two miles out of Sherman, and we were walking down a road, and there's railroad tracks about a half a mile from our house. And I happened to glance over to the right, and I seen something big and white in, in on the edge of the field, across the field by the edge of the woods. And I kept looking, and it seemed like it was mimicking us. We would stop. It would stop. Uh, we walked. It would walk. And finally, I'm like, oh, no, we better get out of here. So we started to run, and my brother froze. He couldn't run. So I went back and got him, (laughs) grabbed his hand. We ran like crazy past the railroad tracks, and there was a little hill. And we didn't turn around until we got to the top of the hill, and we looked over, and we didn't see it again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It must have went back into the woods. My dad was working in a sawmill, which is about another half a mile away from there. And we went in there all hysterical, going crazy, and... Of course, they were all in the break room, and my dad and all of them go, you're crazy. You guys, get out of here and go home. Mm-hmm. Of course, and my dad was right there making fun of us, too. So yeah. that, that was the first time he just thought we were nuts. And we didn't even really want to go home because we were afraid, yeah. afraid to walk down there again. I, I don't, it, it just looked like it was as curious about us as we was about it. Mm-hmm. So, but it was, it scared us. I know that. Now, the next time. You saw this. Okay. We yeah, see him several times. One, one other time they were down there. We had, we were walking and there was uh they were on the railroad tracks and there was actually two of them. Uh, the first time they were on their hind legs mm-hmm. and it just reminded me of a giant sloth. Uh, and if you look at like a mylodon is a little bit smaller than uh, the giant sloth, but had a, you know, a huge tail. They were always white mm-hmm. and there was two of them and we sat there watching them. And then here comes a train. So we knew the conductor had to see him. There's, mm-hmm. And as soon as the train went through, they disappeared. Uh, so that was the, I think that was maybe the second time we saw him. 
Uh, do you want me to go in and all yeah, seven of them? Yeah, I, I, I think your dad eventually saw them. Yeah, my they? dad finally, I think he, <laughs> he finally seen them and finally like, okay, you know, and then my mom seen them because uh, they were around there one day, and I didn't see it this time, but my sister, she had a horse, and she was riding back about dusk one night, and mm-hmm. that uh, she came across one in the field behind our house. We lived out, and there was a big farm there, and the horse bucked her off, mm-hmm. and she had to run home, and, of course, the horse ran home too, got there, uh, but she seen them that time. The one time my dad really saw them close, uh, actually, we were camping in my backyard, well, actually, it was bailed a side yard. But anyway, me and my brother and two other friends mm-hmm. were sleeping in a pup tent. And I woke up screaming. I often wish I could be hypnotized to see. Yeah. But I woke up screaming. I remember, I still remember to this day, I unzipped the, the tent and put my head out. And all I can remember seeing was stars mm-hmm. from the night. And I finally gave up. But I couldn't zip the, coat, the pup tent back mm-hmm. up, laid back down. And my dad had come out. Uh, Cause he was going to work early that morning. This was, you know, probably five in the morning, four in the morning. And he said this, one of those white, what we end up calling white monsters was there in the yard over the tent. Oh, wow. And he said it took off up over a dirt road uh, right there. So he, he's seen it closer. And I don't know if I heard it, if I seen it, I have no idea, yeah. but I wish I could remember that though. Right. But from all of your experiences, and again, some other people outside of your family saw them yes. as well. Uh, they were apparently docile. They they weren't, yeah. uh, weren't you know aggressive. in an attack mode no, or anything like never, that. And never heard them make any noise. They never really. One night, my brother and I, and I know this, my son even was embarrassed when I told him that I, we used to go down to the city dump hunting for treasures because <laughs> there wasn't <laughs> there wasn't much else to do in Sherman oh, to be honest, boy. and we didn't have any money, yeah. so we would walk down. We'd go to the railroad tracks and we could walk the tracks to the city dump. And one night we came back; it was late, and we were going down, and we were probably not much more than a quarter of a mile from my house. There's no other houses there then, mm-hmm. but here comes one of them walking across the field toward us, and we're like, "Oh, we're gonna die." You know, but again, we just, we were just scared. We were young, but my dad came looking for us and he picked us up before it got, you know, close enough. So they were like, phew, that's one good thing there anyway. How large uh, would you think that these things were? Well, I think were? when I first wrote the letter when I was 15, I, I said they were like 12 to 18 feet. Uh, and they probably were closer to the 12 foot mark, I would say, looking back at it mm-hmm. now. But they were always big, always always white had that long tail and like i said i'd seen them on fours i'd, I'd seen them on uh, two legs it just depended but it was uh they was scary every time you saw it that's for yeah. sure and my, we had walkie talkies my brother and i got them for christmas one year and we happened to have them on one day and there was a neighbor should i mention his name he's well passed, that's up to you he's passed away okay. i'm sure by now he was pretty older then but his name was Lloyd Themes, and I don't know, I can't remember my own name, but I can rem- <laughs> I remember his name. And he lived right down the street from us, down down another road. And his backyard was actually facing this field and the woods that we had seen him. And we heard him over the walkie-talkie telling somebody, he said, man, he said, I'm seeing some large white creatures mm. in the back of the house. He said, that they're way too big to be a bear. Yeah. And that's how he described them. He said, they're just large white too big to be a bear wow so you felt probably somewhat vindicated not only the dad saw it yes but the people outside your family saw them as well yeah Uh, now there's another book uh, that uh, that you were showing us uh, the complete guide of mysterious beings and and this is written by a john keel now this book has uh creatures sightings of all kinds all around the world. Of course, everybody's heard of the Bumble Snowman, sure, sure. Uh, Bigfoot, things like that. So there's a lot of things out there like this that people have seen all around the world that really do- doesn't have an explanation for. Yes. But as many people have seen these things, it's got to like... There's something there. Something's got to be out there. Well, right? even the government has come out now with UFOs sure. and are acknowledging with video... We don't know what this is, but yeah, there's but something out there. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things I don't think we can explain. Yeah. Now, back up in, in New York State, you were telling me that uh, 
not far from where some of these sightings were that you have caves and things like yeah, that. They, call, they call it Chautauqua Gorge, which was a beautiful area. When I was growing up, we would uh, camp there as scouts and things. And, uh, and someone that had later on had said that there were caves in there and that somebody had went into those caves and were scared to death, never told anybody about it. And that's, and that was years after mm-hmm. I'd already left and was in the service and, and, and here in Ohio. But yeah, they, it's called Chautauqua Gorge. Yeah. So, which is where we've seen them like as a family group one time from the car. Uh-huh. Uh, all of us were driving and it was my brother's and myself, my dad, and my mom, and we actually, dad actually pulled over, Mm -hmm. and we watched, there was four of them in the corner of a field, Mm -hmm. and it was just, we sat there and watched them until they disappeared into the woods. Now, I don't want to tell your age, but you saw these as a young boy, as a teenager, this is many years later, have have anyone else seen or saw these uh, in that area? We haven't heard, we haven't haven't heard a thing. I keep hoping, and I've, I've looked over the years, once in a while, I get on the internet to see if there's any been strange sightings or anything mm-hmm. in that area, and I, I haven't seen anything, no. Oftentimes, as time goes by, we have our, our memories of things dim, but there are some indelible things that just won't go away. Do you have nightmares about yeah, some of these You know, things? and actually, last night, knowing I was going to do this interview today, I'm going, all that started coming back to me. Yeah. And it, it's just like, I know when I was explaining everything to the Moth Boys, they're like, you remember details like crazy because, you know, I was like 12 years old. And mm-hmm. Now I'm almost 70, so I'll tell my it's age. Okay. I'm almost 70. And he said, it's like you did it yesterday. I said, I, something like that, you don't forget. Right. And I can remember just about every detail that, I, that I've seen those. I mean, and I can still picture them. I wish I had a camera. One time I actually went back to get a camera. Uh-huh. I was riding my bike and actually in another set of woods across because there was woods all around where I grew up. And it one was up there in the corner and was on all fours. And all I seen was the one. So I quick went back to my house to get a camera. Mm -hmm. Of course, by the time I got back, it was gone. So, you know, it's not the days like nowadays, everybody's recording everything. (laughs) You know, if it would happen today, I'd I'd have probably had a video or something, you know. Now, have you ever talked to anybody in zoology or anything that that deals with, you know, animal life uh, that might have any idea of what that could be. No, I haven't. I, I wish, yeah, over now that I'm thinking back, I mm-hmm. wish I would have, but no, I never have, no. Of course, most of us, uh, most of us know, you know, what sloth, I mean, they're not supposed to be with right, us anymore. Right, not supposed to be around. Well, actually, uh, maybe there's smaller versions of Yeah, there of is, it's called a mylodon. You know, and yeah. I've looked at, uh, and I've even looked at Habitat, uh, South uh, South America mm-hmm. had one that was supposed to have been extinct like 10,000 years ago, which mm-hmm. was the most recent ones. But somehow, but if you take a look, I've seen pictures of what they've had, and it looks exactly like what we saw. And I'm thinking, yeah. okay, how would they get from, mm-hmm. you know, South America? And why would they get southwestern New York where tons of snow, bad winters? Right. You know, what, what do they eat? I, I don't have a clue what they eat. I don't know what they were... I always thought they might have been omnivores because there was mm-hmm. farmers that would drop their, like if a cow died or something, they would put them at the back of the field by the woods. Mm-hmm. And within a few days, they were gone. Mm. So I don't know if they were eating on that. I don't know if this white creature, because we knew another guy that had seen it close to the city dump. So did they go to the city dump scrounging for food? I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, we had one other guy, one other gentleman that I know seen them at this time. So yeah. I, I don't know. I wish I did know. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, as we've already uh, stated, uh, I, I'm sure for many years when you tell this story, people would probably look at you like, okay, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just like other people that have been seeing unidentified flying objects all these yes, years and yeah. the government was saying there's nothing to it, and now they're coming out and saying, yes. here's video that we've – so you – you know, it, it makes, I guess, a lot more believable when more sure. and more people start realizing that what well, we saw all that time, maybe yeah. there was something there. And you know, when you're a young teenager, even 15, you know, you're not going to share that with everybody because you're going to think, sure. oh, everybody's going to think I'm crazy. Of course, pretty much everybody where I grew up knew I was crazy, <laughs> but that's another story entirely. Yeah. But uh, uh, I had, after the podcast came out, I had some of my old classmates mm-hmm. uh, contact me and they said, you mentioned that a little bit to me when we were younger. So I guess I did tell yeah. a few of my close friends 
about him. Now, whether he didn't didn't say he didn't believe me or did believe me, but yeah. So yeah. he did that. Well, as we explore even ocean depths that we've never been able to get yeah. to those levels before, and we're finding all kind of marine life that we never knew existed you've seen, before. Yeah, you've seen that all the time because I'm, I'm always yeah. reading articles on things like that. Yeah. So uh, your next, uh, after this interview, we're glad to have you come in and talk to, to Litter Media. You're going to be on another podcast at some yeah, point. And I'm not even sure. This gentleman just contacted me a few weeks ago. I guess he had contacted the Moth Boys, mm -hmm. and he's he was out of Pennsylvania, and he wants to do a, a podcast with me concerning this because he thought it was, was kind of neat. They said there's been other people that make up like maps and stuff of creatures around the United States. That, and I, I guess I'm going to make the next map because mm. they're, they're going to put that near Sherman. Because, you know, Sherman don't have a, I mean, I love growing up there. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yeah. But it's just one of those places where once, you, once you're out of high school, <laughs> what do you do? Oh. You know, so. <laughs> Sounds like my hometown of <laughs> Latteville, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there's still no red lights in Sherman. No Latteville. Yeah. No, nothing there. Yeah. So I think the only famous person that came out of Latteville was Shelley Mather, Urban Meyer's wife. <laughs> <laughs> John, we appreciate your being uh, with us. Uh, tell people how they can get the, uh, this at least is, the, the, uh, the White Monsters book. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Okay. From what I understand, they did, they did put that on Amazon. Uh, and if anyone wants it, they can get a hold of me. I got copies. Uh, they'll send me copies. They're not making any money off of right. this. Which what means it, you're not making oh, anything I haven't made it. No, I haven't seen a dime, no. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm going to get from this interview yet. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, but you can, you can get this on, uh, on Amazon. And uh, he said as many copies as I need. I'd wow. like to get it in the libraries around here because they've actually put this book in all the libraries in Chautauqua County. Huh. Uh, they went all out. There's a couple stores up there that sell them now. Hmm. So, and they said they're putting all the money back into it. Oh, that's uh, Once they, you know, once they sell them and get the revenue from that. So, Very good. At least that's what they're telling me. They're <laughs> they're probably all driving Mercedes they're down or something. in Barbados <laughs> right now. John, keep selling it. Keep selling it. John, we appreciate you being with oh, us. Oh, I appreciate you talking to yeah. me. I really do. If it's you've, great. If you've ever been to a football game out of Dina over the last 20-some years, you've heard John on the PA out there, and he really makes it entertaining. <laughs> John Goodwill, our guest today, talking about the White Monsters of Sherman, New York, our Litter Media Live Special Edition, brought to you by Classic Brands. I'm Mike Smith.